episode of the Dense Pixels podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Brad, joined by my co-host, Micah. Hello. Uh, you will be pleased to know that after uh, going back to our format last week, uh, where we talked about, like, stuff we've been playing and, like, normal things and, and things of that nature, uh, that we are back to our normal show format of announcing a industry-changing acquisition, followed by a wall-to-wall NFTs, um, <laughs> as you do. <laughs> because that's that's all the game industry is anymore, is, gi- is giant companies buying slightly smaller but still very influential companies and NFTs. That's the they're games gonna, industry uh, now. They're going to NFT us to death, man. They're going <laughs> to NFT us to death. And, so, yeah. Uh, so, PlayStation bought Bungie. Or to phrase it another way, PlayStation bought the original creators of Halo uh, <laughs> for a cool $3.6 billion. Uh, or in, to put it to put that in another parlance uh about 42 percent of one bethesda (laughs) which has many studios um yeah this seems like a lot of money for bungie um i haven't played destiny in a while i uh i i downloaded onto my system to Mm -hmm. transfer my trophies to get my trophy count up um but and then I played it a little bit and it started a mission. I'm just like, I don't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> I don't remember being 1100 power level or light level ever. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just gonna turn this off and just not deal with it. But 3.6 billion dollars that seems like a lot, especially because you know, after everything that they're, they're be, according to everything they're saying. Uh, that's being said, Mm -hmm. uh, Bungie will remain independent. Bungie will continue to work on destiny two, uh, for all platforms. And, um, now I know destiny, I know Bungie is more than just destiny. Mm -hmm. Um, but you think Bungie, you think destiny. So I guess let's first get this out of the way. This had, this was already planned. Right. Oh yes. This was yes. Hundred. Planned. Yeah. Every like, everyone's like, oh man, people... this is their answer. Microsoft. And no, while not. the timing yes. of well, yeah, while while the timing of the news might have had something to do with it. Sure. Um, yeah. Like I'm sure they've been talking to Bungie for several months at this point. You don't you don't spend this much money to acquire a company without getting a very good and very thorough look at their financials, without getting a very good and very thorough look at you know. Their, their current state, their current liquidity, you know, how much, <laughs> like, like future plans, like expansion plan, like, like, you know, everything before you splash this kind of cash. And Bungie seems like the type that would also uh, look at a contract very carefully given mm-hmm. the previous two relationships that yeah. they've been in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding, so- right? <laughs> they're not going to just be like, they're not just going to let a company just be like, they're not going to whore themselves out to the next big conglomerate that offers a bunch of money. Um, so, yeah, the announcement may be, you know, the timing of the announcement is is kind of funny, but this isn't like uh, Sony on that Monday saw that Microsoft <laughs> bought... <laughs> Activision Blizzard and was like, "Oh shit, we gotta hurry up and buy somebody. Who 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 are we in good with?" Well, Bungie's given us some exclusive uh, uh, guns before. Maybe we could buy them. All right. You no, know, to be to be more precise, Activision gave them some right. exclusive guns before. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh so. Yeah, but so like I said, yeah, like like you said, not not a direct response uh, to. The Microsoft uh, acquis- or Activision acquisition. That's that always that's been tripping me up for the last two weeks. Um, see, so yeah, De- Destiny Two not going anywhere. Um, I think they bought a lot more than just like a game, though. So obviously, yeah. like Sony doesn't give a shit where Destiny's played because they're going to be making revenue from it regardless. So that's that's one thing. Um, Bun- or Bungie, yeah, Bungie has also arguably made the most successful live service game, I would argue, outside of a paid subscription MMO. Hmm. 
Is that a fair statement? Well, now I'm going to rethink that statement because I, okay, that's, that's a ridiculous statement, actually. Let me completely backtrack because what I just said is stupid. Um, because obviously like Fortnite exists and so does Apex Legends and things of that nature. I know what you, but I know, but I know what you're trying to get at, right? Like when you think Destiny, yeah, it's a live service game, but it's also, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's trying, it's, it, it hit the perfect balance of being a money grubbing live service game and mm-hmm. being an actual good game that like hardcore players play. Oh, actually, here there you go. They they made they've made really the most successful live service game that's not focused around multiplayer. Not focused around like battle royale, things of that nature. Like that has Yeah. It like, feels like, like, that, like a console game. Like it yeah, feels like that, that like... strat that straddles the line between being an MMO and being like a free to play shooter. Yeah. Yeah. And and they've also and not only that, but they've also taken that game, released it two times, had a rocky launch <laughs> both times, and and completely turned the ship around. So like like they're not they're they know what they're doing over there and they understand how to craft an experience that the people that they want to play the game um would will appreciate. Yeah. Um so like you said, you, you don't think Sony is buying Destiny. Mm. Uh, and I agree with you. I think they're buying I think they're buying a company that knows how to do shooters very, 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 very well. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you kind of intimated in uh, the naming of this link, Killzone? Kill, next Killzone? I, I, I'm, being, I'm being cheeky by saying I know, like that, would be, but, that would be shitty to force Bungie to make a fucking Killzone. But, I, I understand that, but because it's not, uh, yeah. But I know, but they could make, they're making a new IP. They're mm-hmm. making a new IP. It wouldn't be out of the bounds of reason to assume that it has something to do with a reticle and a, and a, <laughs> and a firearm, maybe. Um, if you're going to do that, the next big thing um you want that in your you want that in your back pocket plus they're buying they're buying all of the like this article says they're buying all of bungie's technical expertise Mm -hmm. uh that can assist them with all the other games that they're that they're doing well and and that's Um, the that's the real thing too is that they've made two very notable franchises bungie has uh that are just known for being tremendously fun to play. Like, games that just feel really good to play. And they've taken the latter of the two, and like you said, like I said, turned into a live service experience that, you know, is basically, so far, I mean, Destiny 2 is turning five years old this year, and it's still, you know, releasing brand new content. Like, they have the biggest expansion that the game's had ever, Coming out this spring, um, with the with the uh, witch, with the Witch Queen expansion, um, and they're going to continue making that. So, this is a company that knows what they do, and they're really good at what they do. And I feel like that they might be able to impart some of that wisdom because we we you know we all know Sony developers love to talk to one another, love to work together, love to share their you know best practices, or you know help each other when when they get stuck, which is the benefit of having you know, all of these studios working towards one mission and not necessarily worried about being the most successful, you know, studio that's in, in the Sony camp. Um, it's also not a coincidence that there's a report that came out today that said Sony is planning to put out 10 live service games uh, by 2026, which is frankly a terrifying headline. Like, I don't know if that's the headline <laughs> that I really want to see. That could mean a lot of different things. Um I feel like that you don't need to go that hard in the paint, Sony. Um, <laughs> so that feels a little extreme. Um, but this was surprising. Like, obviously, this came out of left field. Um, it, obvi- it, of course, did not feel nearly as earth-shifting as Activision, um, or even as Bethesda, for that matter. Like, Bethesda felt a lot more uh, earthquakey um, than this. Do you Do you think that we ever see... Not not Destiny because I, I I truly don't believe that they would silo Destiny to the to the Sony platform exclusively, um at this point even even like a new Destiny like if like if Destiny three were to happen I don't think that you would see it that you would see it uh, behind a, a walled garden, but do you think that we do see 
a new Bungie game um, or series that is PlayStation exclusive? Or do you truly think that they're going to be independent and can publish wherever they want to? I think, um, I think eventually, maybe not right now, Mm -hmm. you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get comfortable in the marriage before you start doing a bunch of like, before, before the real you comes out. (laughs) So, so, (laughs) but eventually I think that, you know, when they're doing destiny three and it's multi-platform or whatever, I think they're going to split some of that team off and say, Hey, We'll we'll give you all the money you need for Destiny Three. How about you make us something, right? Mm-hmm. We'll give you we'll give you we'll give you a money to make the most beautiful cake you've ever seen. Just make me a smash cake for for my kid or something like that, and we'll see where this goes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it'll only be for us. Um, and I don't think that's completely unreasonable. Um, if you know if that's how their relationship is structured. Um, but you, you know, you don't throw around this kind of money, um, and, and just are like, Hey, uh, whatever, let's just do what, like, no, nah, man, you throw around this kind of money. You're going to want some say, like, that's mm-hmm. why there are executive producers in movies that have like studio notes and shit. Like, Nope, he's got to fight a giant spider at the end of it. Like, cause they're paying the what the fucking money. Right. And if they're paying the money and they want to see a giant spider at the end of it, or then Will Smith is going to have to fight a giant spider. Like that's just how it is. They, and it's also worth noting here. So Bungie has 900 employees. Um, they're also like an interesting studio in that they are be- because they've had some level of autonomy even like when they worked with Activision, even though Activision was very overbearing on terms of like the type of content that was in the game, I don't know how much they actually had their hands on the development of the Destiny games. Um, they're they almost run in like a Blizzard esque sort of way in in some fashion. So like I almost wonder if like you could see an expansion of them and they could al- almost become like Sony's Blizzard in a lot of ways, where they're working on like these very specific genre games yeah. that, but that, that are just very polished and, and very fun to play and very accessible and things of that nature. I don't know. Like I said, it's, I mean, it's, can... it's, it's a long, uh, long tail on this one. Um, and it's kind of hard to see past destiny right now because that's all we really know. Um, but shifting gears from there. So we talked about when the Activision Blizzard thing happened, um, that I feel like that in this, climate you're gonna see governments looking a little bit more harshly at these kind of deals um and and the sony bungie thing i think you might see as well even though that's a little bit less of a you know industry shift that's kind of just one studio acquiring a developer which is you know par for the course um but apparently the the federal trade commission in the u.s is going to be reviewing uh the activision blizzard deal uh as opposed to the justice department um, which is very interesting. And it's, the FTC is headed up by, uh, a woman named Lena Khan, um, who is kind of known before she was appointed to that post, uh, to be very wary of consolidation, especially in like the tech industry and things like that. Like one of her things was, it was like a thesis that she wrote or like, like a big essay that she wrote, um, about the dangers of tech consolidation and why we should be paying more attention to companies like, you know, Facebook buying Instagram and things of that nature. Um, so it could be very interesting, uh, what the FTC, uh, comes to make of this, uh, which we'll, we'll see. I don't know. Like I said, I don't personally think it'll stop it because, um, it, it, it's, it's just, a, it just doesn't seem like a deal that, governments are inclined to to kind of put the brakes on but we'll see like like is, I, it because, I, is it because it's video games you know what i mean and and a lot of people still see video games as a they don't take it seriously until they want to take it seriously yeah you know what i mean like like so it like it's not like something that is ubiquitous right it's not google Right. Yeah. Like every like Google is a verb at this point. Right. Like it's been used so much that it's a verb. So everyone knows. So people are going to have their eyes on companies like that. 
and everyone knows who Microsoft is. But well, I think I think that's it right there. Not not only like is it Microsoft? Microsoft specifically had like has an infamous past when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to this kind of thing. Like if you look back in the nineties, um, Microsoft was kind of the post. They kind of slowed down a lot of acquisitions that you might have seen like around the internet bubble in the early two thousands because they got their hand slapped so bad by the government right. and and so <laughs> like that. I think just the fact that they're involved um, is automatically going to invite scrutiny. But I think a lot of people. Had you know hemmed and hawed in the and during the Trump administration, when like the the Sprint T-Mobile merger went through without too much you know without too much scrutiny, and the AT and T Time Warner merger went through without much scrutiny, and the Disney you know Fox acquisition you know of their of their properties went through um, without a whole lot of oversight, and a lot of people were really scratching their heads, especially like with the Disney thing, because look how much entertainment. Disney's consolidated underneath of their umbrella. Um, and when you have companies like Netflix, whose stock is taking a beating, and I'm sure if you look at their financials, uh, things are not going too well because they've lost a lot of this content that they can stream. I'm sure like if Netflix is raising the alarm, then, you know, that's going to force some people to take a look at things. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's wild, man. Like it's <laughs> like, I don't, I don't have a problem with corporations existing, right? Like I'm not one of those, I'm not one of those people that's just like, all corporations are bad. Uh, you know, just a majority of them are bad, but, um, but I, you know, I don't want corporations to be able to run, to run rampant either. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to eventually live in a mega city one where I don't want to, as much as like, I enjoy the cyberpunk genre. Like I, I don't want to live in it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? A lot, um, a lot of folks are wringing their hands about, like, industry consolidation in the game industry. And I, I understand where the concern comes from. But the thing with the game industry is that people, especially nowadays, talented people want to advance beyond their station. And talented people also get bored being in one place and doing the same thing for a long time. So, like... I'll, I'll give you this as, as an example. So, like, you know, let's say you have these, you know, team leads and, and guys that could be game directors, like, working at Bungie. And, you know, Destiny's going really well, whatever other projects they're working on going real. But there's just not a lot of upward mobility for them. But they definitely have the talents and maybe, or maybe just, like, Destiny or the type of games that Bungie's making just isn't the type of stuff that they are passionate about making anymore. What we always see is that those people tend to leave, you know, they'll make a shitload of money, then they'll go, open their own independent studio, start small, bring on a small team, and if they're really good, then they'll probably put out a good game. And you have this constant churn of indies that are, you know, that are strong. Like, that's why we've seen the independent game industry really just fucking blow up like crazy over the past decade. And then the other people, you know, but in below them get to then move up in their spots and the, the cycle kind of continues itself. The, th the thing that I worry about is the thing that we saw in the early 2010s where we saw this, you know, big acquisition strategy happening with a lot of big publishers. And then there was like a dip in the game industry as a whole, or not even a dip, but just like a leveling. There wasn't like the kind of constant growth that was being projected and then yeah. you get a bunch of studios being closed because not every game can, you know, sell 5 million units. That that's what I'm more concerned about. Yeah. Yeah, I see. I see what you're saying. Um I don't know, man. It's interesting. It's um it's super interesting, man. So uh you know what else is interesting? PlayStation and Discord integration is apparently coming down the pipe soon which is pretty yeah they pretty uh, exciting. they asked they asked me if i wanted to link my playstation account to my discord i was like all right whatever i don't, but I don't use not, either much yeah but, but but messing with sony not the only thing that you can do on discord that's right see if i was uh if i was swifter if i was if i was quicker 
<laughs> I'd be able to, I'd be able to pick up what you're throwing down, but, but, uh, you, you threw a 60 mile an hour, uh, slow ball and I whiffed it, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Because you can go to Discord, you can go to densepixels.com slash fans and be invited to our Discord. Uh, and when you do, uh, you can talk about a lot of different stuff. Uh, let's see. Let's pop it open. Let's pop it open and see what people are talking about. Uh, the Royal Rumble was uh, this past weekend. A lot of people are talking about that nonsense. Um, you know you know what we're not talking about on this show today? The fucking Royal Rumble. I can tell you that. <laughs> I, th- I think it comes up in the post office briefly, but we're not spending a lot of time on it. Well, not, yeah, it is really rain. not a lot of really not a lot of time. To, not not much to really talk about. Uh, it's just a it's just a fantasy book and get mad when it doesn't happen at this point. <laughs> um, but uh, if you uh, if you stream and you want to promote your stream, we got a whole channel for that, and uh, you can go and help each other out. You can post uh anything you want the post office and we uh we check it once a week and we'll read all of your uh, all of your posts um gaming news uh and just anything in general that you want to talk about go to uh densepixels.com slash fans uh and join the discord uh you're typing already so go type youtube.com slash dense pixels and uh subscribe to the youtube channel hit hit that like button and smash that subscribe button um, you could see me in my bad lighting because I didn't feel like setting up all my lights. So <laughs> I'm, I got orange light here and here and white light here. It's just it's an it's it's nonsense. Uh, by going to youtubecom slash dense pixels. Uh, and since you're smashing, since you're smashing that subscribe button, just just keep smashing. Just be like the Hulk. Smash, smash, and subscribe to the Nerd Apocalypse, Black on Black Cinema, Coming Distractions, and the weekly preview episode of the Look Forward Political Podcast. And um, you know, if you're feeling generous, uh, which you should be, you know, you, you should be feeling very generous. Um, you got five bucks that you don't need. You put that coffee down. Uh, don't get that coffee from Starbucks and give it to us. Uh, and by doing that once a month or fifty dollars for the full year, you get uh, access to a whole slew of other podcasts uh, that include the airing of grievances, No Time to Bleed, The Men with the Golden Tongues, Upstage Conversations, and the entire hour and a half to two hour ish episode of the Look Forward Political Podcast. And look, we 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 might need the money because I'm out here picking fights with more successful podcast networks, so we might need them for <laughs> to to pay to pay our lawyers as we as we fight trademark battles <sighs> in, in small claims court. So. <laughs> so we re- we really we really need your support here at uh, deadspixels.com slash premium doing what you do. Uh if you could at least subscribe for 83 weeks, <laughs> that would be wonderful. <laughs> so d- despite the fact that this is gonna be the February to end all Februarys in terms of game releases, there's not a lot of game releases this week. The most notable game release this week. Uh, is Dying Light 2 Stay Human, which is coming to PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Uh, Reviews are starting to come out now for this game, and the thing that I've heard more than anything is that the bugs are more numerous and more impactful than those of that were in Cyberpunk 2077, which is not (laughs) not what you want to (laughs) hear if you're looking forward to Dying Light 2. Just saying you may want to wait until a patch or 60 uh, come out for that game. I mean, that's like the gaming equivalent of calling a black person the N word, right? Like <laughs> to, me, to, to say that your game has more bugs than than Cyberpunk and and are worse and are and are and like are more worse. more impactful of the game experience than 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 those of Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. Um, yeah, that's rough, man. Like, good to know that in this day and age, where a lot of companies seem to really be taking things more responsibly. And, and trying to hold off games until they're truly ready to release. I see you, Halo Infinite, you know, things of that nature. <laughs> we still have companies out there that are just like, we just got to get something out the door eventually. Because Jesus Christ, we've been working <laughs> on this thing for seven years. Uh, Life is Strange Remastered Collection comes to PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Google Stadia. Uh, Cheftastic Bullet Blast comes to PC. Believe it or not, that is the extent of the new games that I'm aware of that are coming this week. But because it is a new month, 
Uh, we do have new PlayStation Plus games for you. Uh, on PlayStation 5, you get Planet Coaster Console Edition. Um, and on PS4 and PS5, you get UFC 4 and Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep, a one-shot adventure. This is one of the Borderlands 2 DLCs that they are releasing as a standalone game. Obviously in anticipation of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, which is coming out this spring. I mean, you talk about, like, I wonder if this is a good move, right? Because I I assume that Assault on Dragon's Keep is the, the it was, it was, I'm, I assume it has the aesthetic that this new game is going to have, right? Like yes. Dungeons and Dragons style. Yes. Like, do you burn your, do you burn your, uh, your potential base? Uh, do, do they get burnt out if they play this for free? Or well, I mean, do you this think it's really just sure. enough? Is, do you think this will be just enough to kind of get people like into it? I think that they are doing this to get people who like Borderlands maybe casually, but and have seen like previews for Wonderlands and are just like, I don't know about this game. What is this? And they kind of want to give them a chance to kind of get a sense for what the game is going to be like. Mm. That's that's my that's my guess. That's my guess. Because this DLC I, uh, was very popular. Like, a lot of people really enjoyed it. So, Oh, I imagine it was. They're making a whole damn game <laughs> based <laughs> off of it. So, yeah, I would imagine that it was very popular. I think I am kind of burnt out on Borderlands. For, I, I don't know if I need another Borderlands for a very, very, very long time. Um, not not without an appreciable shaking up of the of the formula, I don't think. Because yeah. I, I, the, though I did very much enjoy... Uh, playing through Borderlands Three, I definitely have not returned to it. Um, yeah, since since I beat it, so yeah, uh, I I played I played as much as I like I, yeah I enjoyed it, but I didn't I didn't enjoy it as much as I did Borderlands Two. Like I I had multiple characters leveled up and multiple builds and all that and just and and Borderlands Three it was very fun, but I couldn't really stomach playing it again and i don't yeah. know if it's just the writing um uh, that i've just kind of grown out of or if it's the uh or if it's the gameplay loop i don't i don't think it's the gameplay loop i i enjoyed it but i don't like i don't know i, I, don't I would know. argue i would argue the gameplay loop is probably part of it because there are uh, between two you know two and three coming out seven year seven year gap there was a lot of games, especially in that action RPG space, like that very like looped, repeatable, you know, grind type of space um, that came out and just did it better and more fun. Yeah. And Borderlands 3, I felt like stuck to the formula a little too slavishly, like a little too, like it was, it was a little too in line with what they had done previously. Yeah. So... And didn't do enough to modernize. So, like I said, fine game, but again, I haven't I haven't revisited it at all since since I uh, since I beat it. Um, Xbox also released their free games. Now, look, I've come to the realization that because Game Pass exists and because Game Pass is such an excellent deal, I think we just have to come to grips with the fact that Games with Gold is probably going to be like shit, pretty much. Most yeah. uh, most most months. <laughs> I don't think you can expect anything from there, and I think that's the trade off you have to make when you get brand new AAA games day one uh, for this monthly subscription price. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't. I, I've I've I I don't think I've heard of any one of these four games. Uh, I have not heard of any of them. Yeah. So, I... Broken Sword Five available the entire month. Uh, Never Yield, available the second half of the month into March. Uh, Hydrophobia, which allegedly was an Xbox 360 game, uh, available for the first half of February. And then Bugs. Uh, sorry, Band of Bugs. I was looking at the the game title, and the Band of part is literally so small that I thought the game was just called Bugs. Uh, it's coming out the second half of February. Uh, apparently that's a tactical, uh, like a tactical battle game similar to Advance Wars. Huh. So if you, if, so if you like turn-based strategy games, then maybe you might like Band of Bugs coming out. 
No, I'm not going to like it at all. But um, <laughs> yeah, they're like even in this video, like to your point about like Games with Gold being like nonsense. In this video, towards the end, they show you how you can get to the Games with Gold. So on your dashboard, you click Game Pass, uh, Xbox Game Pass, and mm-hmm. then when you click it, you go all the way down to the very, very bottom uh, to find the Games with Gold because that's how they feel about Games with Gold. <laughs> like, Iro- Ironically, where Microsoft has gone to find those games. <laughs> 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 that, they're, that they're serving up for people. Um, before we get into the depressing news, uh, did you get a chance to play Nobody Saves the World this week? Uh, no, I haven't because it's just been it's just been crazy. Um, I have not played much of it because I got a new board game um, mm-hmm. that is very good that I've been playing a ton and soloing it because it's a very good mm-hmm. game to play solo as well. So. Um, you can play board games by yourself. That's all. It's a whole genre, Micah. Like, there's a whole genre of solo board games that exist. Oh man, yeah. Because it's wanna... not. It doesn't involve like sticking. It doesn't involve like solitaire, right? Like, no, you're actual... not. You're not two handing the game. Like, like m- most most modern strategy games, especially nowadays, uh, have some sort of solo mode either baked into the game, or they will actually build like. AIs that you can pilot with, you know, with like a card system that they develop. It's very cool, actually. So huh. it's an interesting chat. I mean, it's not quite the same as, you know, playing with another player because the AI actions are usually kind of pretty programmed. And in some games, like it's very easy to play around them, like when you understand how they work. Um, but the best mm-hmm. games, you know, there's there's good solo modes in a lot of things. So. I might have to. I might have to pick your brain on some solo, uh, some solo board games. I, yeah. I would love to get into board games, mm-hmm. but one, I don't have anyone to play with. Right? Like, even if we didn't have all this pandemic stuff, I don't have anyone to play with. I live too far away from any of you, uh, or you, because no yeah. one else would. Right? <laughs> um, I, I live too far away. My wife is not my. You know the, the games that we play like we like we're we're old and black and we have like a lot of old black friends Mm -hmm. and we don't play like board games because they're not nerds like so we play like taboo and you know like we played we played that god awful what's that god awful uh card game uh oh cards against humanity yeah, we played Cards Against Humanity once, and it was just the worst thing to play yeah. with a bunch of church-going black people in their forties. Like it was just, it was just the worst time. And like somebody had picked up a card that said Bukake, and they didn't know what Bukake was, and I had to explain what Bukake was, and I explained it a little too well. They're like, "What do you know about this?" <laughs> so it's just not. It's just not it's not good. So if I want to get play some board game and I follow a board game channel on YouTube mm-hmm. and they all look like they're having a lot of fun. So I might need I didn't know what, that what, there was what a, board game channel do you follow on YouTube? I'm curious. Uh No Rolls Bard. No Rolls Bard. I've never heard of them, which is shocking. I I enjoy I enjoy that channel very much because I enjoy the personalities. Mm. Uh, some of the personalities do some wrestling content, but they've spun off and kind of done some board game stuff. And I follow it for the personalities, and they they introduce me to like. Oh, I do know. I like I am aware of that channel actually. Yes, uh, yes. I, I I take it. I take it that's not a good sign. No, they're not really. <laughs> <laughs> they're they, not they, hardcore. I would I would imagine they're not hardcore. Uh they they're looked down on slightly just because they're just parlaying their wrestling fame into. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get it. I get yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, look, I'm not I'm not getting into a hardcore board game channel. I didn't even know that you could play board games by yourself. So I'm not, <laughs> I, I, I will uh, I will I will have to compile uh some accessible solo games that you might be interested to check out then. So Okay. Hopefully nothing that breaks the bank. Like I Well, I mean, define break the bank. Or... Like that that's that's the thing. Like like in a hobby board game, like 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 you're like, hey, this is sixty dollars. I'm like, I'm, I'm not even blinking. Like that's just I, yeah. Like fifty bucks okay. is fine. Okay, I'm not trying to pay like seventy five hundred dollars for a board game. All right, that's fine. That's fine. We can we can work around that. 
Um, so moving on to this week in NFTs, um, I didn't think it was possible that this early in the cycle we would get to the worst take that you will see on NFTs. <laughs> Yet, I find it difficult to see how this is ever going to be topped. <laughs> and Ubi, you, or sorry, Ubisoft. Um, <laughs> so stupid. Uh, had an executive that decided to give an interview to an Australian publication. Uh, his name is Nicolas Puyard, and he is the leader of Ubisoft Strategic Innovations Lab, is what his job is. And uh, he gave an interview, and he said that <laughs> Ubisoft is accustomed to such negative responses in the wake of new things, and that video game fans, quote, don't get what a digital secondary market can bring to them. <laughs> and that's that's our problem because, because it, we're, we just don't get it, Micah. Uh, quoting again, for now, because of the current situation and context of NFTs, gamers really believe it's first destroying the planet and second, a tool for speculation. It's totally both of those things. It uh, is. <laughs> <laughs> the end game is about giving players the opportunity to resell their items once they're finished with them or they're finished playing the game itself. That's all they want to do, Micah. They just want to they just want to benevolently benevolently gift us the ability to get rid of our digital goods. That, that how 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 stupid of us to think that they had any other ulterior motives uh to the contrary uh that we uh that we thought they they were just did it for the money, Micah. Uh yeah, every time, every time anyone, literally anyone from Ubisoft opens their mouth, it gets it. It makes it really, really hard to want to play their games. And normally, I'm just like, whatever. I'll play the. I, I just want to play some cool games. Like, I don't know, man. I I, I don't I don't like. Uh, you shouldn't be talking like this, uh, Nick. Um, strategic. The leader of the strategic inno strategic innovations lab. I just don't. Nobody likes being talked down to, Nick. Um, Mike, you just don't get it. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> Yo, this is the like you said. This is the worst possible take that you can have for NF for this whole NFT situation. Now, do P now is it confusing? Yes. Part of the reason it's confusing is because you are not explaining it properly. Um, no one is, and there's a reason for that. The, and it, it's to confuse people who might not be the brightest or, or to, basically to confuse people who are ignorant to the topic by using big words, by using, uh, acronyms. Uh, because if you say an acronym, most people, they, they don't just say, Hey, what does that stand for? I'm not one of those people. I'll just be like, yo, what does this stand for? And non fungible token, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> like it just like so. Yes, yes, a lot of people are ignorant to it, but you are not explaining it properly. And yes, it's hurting the fucking planet, yo. Like I'm not like I'm not like one of those people that's like, you know, I'm not a I'm not I'm not I'm not the black guy from Captain Planet, right? But at the same time, like I want to live here. Right, like we haven't found mass relays yet, so we gotta stick. We gotta we gotta live here. But this whole like, you don't get it. No, fuck you, dude. And and, and, and it, a lot of people do fucking get it, and they don't fucking want it. <laughs> if there's if they're so concerned with being able to resell digital goods or things of that nature. Like, there are ways to do that that don't rely on the blockchain. It's a lot more work, and it requires you to actually have, like, beefed up security that, you know, can <laughs> that can not be assailed by some, you know, an 18-year-old working in his mom's basement, which these companies never seem to do. But you can, you can, if you, if you truly care about that, like, there, there are definitely ways you can do that without having to run it off of the blockchain, which is the reason 
why NFTs are environmentally uh, harmful. Because in order to ver to validate a blockchain transaction, you have to run it against the entire blockchain, which takes a lot more energy and power than running it against the database of a single, you know, entity that holds that record. And it's not, it, oh, it's just a tool for speculation. No, it literally is just a tool for speculation right now. That's literally all it is. Justin Bieber just bought like one of the fucking ape NFTs or something for like $1.3 million. Do you think Justin Bieber thinks that that NFT is worth $1.3 million? No, he hopes that Justin Bieber's NFT will be, uh, will rise in value so that he can flip it to somebody else and sell it for gobs of money more than he paid for it. Like, have you seen any of these celebrities like talking about NFTs so far? Like no, it, it's, I mean it's the most fucking like gross banal, just like, just disgusting. Like the, like the big one that was making the rounds is like, is Paris Hilton was on the tonight show a couple weeks ago and her and Jimmy Fallon were both talking about NFTs and it was just like the most just, it, it, it made you just want to kind of throw up in your mouth. And like, it, it's, it's the perfect example of, why this shit is bullshit. Like they're just sitting there talking about their fucking apes and how great it is. And you know, the fucking you hear the cringe applause from the audience and stuff like that. Like it, it's dumb. It's just dumb. Yeah. And, 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 no. and again, this dude, like this, this fucking guy from Ubisoft, I guarantee you, he owns at least a handful of entities. And so it's in his, like, if that's the case, I don't know that it's true, but if that's the case, Anything he says about that, you can't take at face value because it's in his interest for NFTs to be to become more widely accepted because it drives the value up of the things that he owns. It's dumb. It's fucking dumb. And and like I said, patronizing people by telling them that, oh, like you just don't get what we're trying to do. Like, no, we know exactly what you're trying to do. You're fucking Ubisoft. You're the company that's literally yeah. made a template for every video game that you make and you shoehorn every game that comes out of your fucking studios into the same template over and over again. Why? Right. Cause it's quick, easy and profitable. That's why you want to make money. I get right. it. There's nothing wrong with it, but can you please limit the fucking damage to the world that you're trying to do by doing it? That's all we're fucking asking for you not to jump on the latest fucking train that everyone's like, everyone, you know, owns cryptocurrency is, is just, is looking to get into as much as possible. It's the same fucking people. It's a Venn, the Venn diagram is just a circle. <laughs> Can NFTs be GIF, GIFs? Like, like GI, like I'm, GIF. I'm sure. I'm sure they can be. I would imagine that Ubisoft will be the first ones to come, to come out with, uh, a gif of you climbing a tower and surveying the land and making an NFT because that's what they do in all of their games. They input a cartography simulation into uh, literally every game that they make. I'll tell you what Ubisoft probably wishes they could do with NFTs, but uh, Atari already beat them to the punch. So just like the concept of NFTs is disgusting on its face. Uh, Atari has found a way to make the concept of NFTs more odious to gamers. <laughs> and so, Mike, you just talked about can GIFs be NFTs? Well, how would you like a gift, Micah? A GFT. Because now <laughs> Atari is releasing giftable NFTs or gifts that unwrap on a specific date that have a surprise inside. And <laughs> when your gift unwraps and you get to see what's inside of it, Micah, you'll find out whether or not you have a common gift, a rare gift, <laughs> or an epic gift. That's right. They have created the world's first NFT loot box. Oh my god! Um, so, uh, are we are we through the looking glass at this point? Like, <laughs> it, it, 
like, <laughs> like, like all of the like, like we just need a microtransaction in there some way. Well, I guess that's what you. That, I guess that's essentially what it is, right? Like it's a microtransaction. You're buying an NFT. I, I'm and, pretty sure it's a macro transaction, Micah. At this point, <laughs> considering how this shit works, like it's it's everything that makes modern gaming the worst in one thing, in one delightful wow. package that you can't open until a specific date. <laughs> I'll I'll read two incredibly masturbatory quotes for you uh, from this. First, from R- Wade Rosen, uh, the CEO of Atari. Uh, What better way to commemorate Atari's 50th anniversary than by ushering in a new era of technological innovation while also honoring the brand that launched the modern video game industry, he said. And then Janine Yorio, who's the CEO of Republic Realm, which is the company that they're partnering to do this with, uh, describes the gift as, quote, like Hallmark cards for the next generation, a more exciting, meaningful gift than either a greeting card or... Or a gift certificate. First of all, this is this is exactly how I explained Bukake to my wife's friend. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> and and second of all, like fuck you, lady, fuck you. What the fuck? I'll tell <laughs> you like, what the, the 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 only thing that makes my Hallmark card experience more exciting is getting to bid you know against other people trying to buy the one copy of the Hallmark card that exists at the Hallmark <laughs> store. <laughs> Woo! What a what a good time that is. Gotta love that. And I don't even know what the card looks like. It's just it's just Hallmark's telling me like, trust me, this card is fucking dope. Like you're gonna yeah, you're gonna love Valentine's, it. This Valentine's Day card is dope, and it'll open in March. It will it will get you laid. It will get you laid. <laughs> trust me. Holy shit, man! Yeah, this is um, yeah. And this is why. And this is why. I, this is why I hate corporations. Not because uh, I don't hate corporations. <laughs> this is why I don't like corporations. Yeah, merge, right? because, merge all you want. Just stop trying to shove bullshit down our throats. Right. Just like like <laughs> if you're gonna if you're gonna merge, like at least come up with some new fucking ideas. No, you're taking one bad idea, combining it with another bad idea, adding a sprinkling of a third bad idea to give the ultimate bad idea. <laughs> this is just the fucking worst, man. This is why people should hate corporations. They got all the fucking uh, uh, money and brain power that that money can buy, and this is the shit they're coming up with. Just, god damn it! <laughs> I and I just I just love the complete uh, the complete lack of putting one's finger in the air. And just kind of like taking stock of the general climate around this shit. Like, right. like it's like you have eyes. Like, obviously, like you have social media. You see what's going on. And you're just like, man, like we're going to announce NFT loot boxes. This is going to be so fucking cool. Of course it came from Atari, a company that nobody cared about for 30 years. And like, and like, they're not even like, they're not even like, they're not even like lying to get like a cheap pop. Remember, like, like, remember when Crystal Dynamics was like, there will be no uh, free to play um, <laughs> uh, things in Marvel's Avengers, and then, and then they got that cheap pop, right? And yeah, then, no, loot, no loot boxes, well, right? And and then you know, well, maybe everybody forgot about it. So like, let's let's just kind of guys, I, guys, I, I don't know, know if you know, but a game like this, we really need to make money constantly over this term. So uh, <laughs> I know what we said. But uh, not so enough like, of you guys actually bought the game. So those of you that did, uh, can we have some more money, please? So they're not even, like, these corporations aren't even lying anymore just to, like, get a little bit of goodwill. Like, I mean, I guess I respect it in some weird way where it's just like, no, f- la- no, we're going we're gonna to bend you right over. We're going to try our best to bend you over and get as much money from you as possible uh, before you wise up. What fucking idiots buying the Atari giftable NFT anyway? I'm sure there's some hardcore Atari dummy out like there. What's, like, like what's going to be in there? A fucking s- screenshot from ET, the landfill game. <laughs> some people might, but look, look, it might, right? 
because that because that was so famous and uh, I mean I that's, don't know. it's better it's better than a shitty cartoon picture of a fucking monkey I can tell you that that looks like that looked like a looks like a knockoff from a gorilla's album yeah so. every single one of them looked the same man I don't know if it's the same <laughs> artist I don't know what I don't know what's going on it is the those... same artist who apparently is not getting any royalties from any of this shit of course because of that's course how this not. stuff always works. Right, but it's about the artist, right? It's about making the artist. Uh, it's about it's about making sure the artist has control of their art. Some Troy rest- Baker. Some, some restrictions may apply. Yeah, that's that's well, that, and that's the thing. So, so what's what's important to note here is that even though like it seems like there's constantly companies and people that are trying to do this, public pressure and calling people out on their bullshit does work, and we've seen three very prominent examples of that. Just this week. Um, so we talked about Troy Baker last week uh, throwing his support behind this company that was trying to make audio NFTs. And people immediately fucking clap back at Troy Baker and be like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you don't know. You, you literally don't understand what you're doing. That That's painfully obvious. And he's reversing course. Um, he put out a tweet yesterday that said uh, he apologized for anyone, for accusing anyone of hating simply for disagreeing with me uh thank you for your feedback and patience after careful consideration i've decided not to continue the partnership uh with voice verse nft good yeah good look i'm not above people i i don't think that everyone that there are some people who are beyond reproach but i'm willing to give people the benefit of the doubt one time and and good on this guy for listening to for actually listening to people right especially Mm -hmm. because like like this dude while he may not be like a superstar actor he's a superstar in the in the in the arena that he is in Mm -hmm. and he could easily just be like he could easily just stick his fingers in his ears and thinks he knows better but he 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 actually looked at it he actually uh uh investigated it and came to this very very wise decision uh and 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 i applaud him for that uh hopefully uh he will be able now to educate or help educate others in 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 the nonsense that is nfts even if you don't even if you don't uh still fully understand it like you can try your best and and just it's the responsible thing to do especially when you are a leader in your field or to put it in, or to put it in ways that he might be able to understand. Look, you can bloviate or you can educate. Which one are you going to be? <laughs> oh my god, we got a lot of I mean, I don't know how the hell you are going to pick a show title today. <laughs> oh, I've already got it. You just gave it to me a couple minutes ago. The ultimate bad idea. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Look, short, simple. Look, we, we, I might use "bloviate educated" as like a clip title or something like that. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Look, I appreciate you, Troy Baker. Good. Yeah, good. Thank you for thank you for listening to your friends who immediately pulled you hauled you on a podcast and was like, "Dude, what are you doing, dummy?" Yeah, <laughs> fucking idiot. So, uh, and th- so we also saw. So, Team Seventeen is a is a. Uh, studio who is known for making the Worms series of games. They've done that for a very long time. And so they announced uh, that they were going to be releasing officially licensed uh, (laughs) NFTs for the Worms series. And they were calling them, because they wanted to just, again, make it worse than it was, uh, Meta Worms, Micah. They were going to call them Meta Worms uh, that was going to have unique generative artwork that will encompass content from the 26 year history of the beloved worms franchise. So <laughs> they, they put this announcement out this literally. So th- this is literally happening in the, in the span of 24 hours, right? So they put this announcement out a studio called agro crab, which made the worms uh, going under game that came out a couple of years ago. Uh, put out a statement on Twitter condemning Team 17 and stating that they will no longer be working with the publisher on any future titles. Uh, Then, Platonic, who did the ukulele games, uh, who they released through Team 17, said that uh, they released a statement uh, strongly expressing a lack of interest in NFTs and that they do not endorse them in the use of wider world. 
they didn't even tell people on their own staff that they were doing this. And so people on their staff revolted against them. And so literally <laughs> by that afternoon, Team 17 came back out and was like, just kidding. We're not going to, we're not going to actually do this. <laughs> Every Holy fucking shit. game company is a raptor fucking hitting the fence right now. Like, like that's literally, it seems like what's going on at this moment in time. Yeah, man. They're, uh, they're, they're like, I, I, I see, I, I cannot believe that they don't know how fucking harmful this shit is, but they're just like, oh my fucking God, look at all this fucking money that's sitting out there though right now. We've got to try it, right? Like, we've got to see if we can just maybe sneak it past. Oh, shit, they hit us. They, they hit us. Like, <laughs> like we can't. Okay, okay, then we could, we could sneak it past them this time. I'm sure they're going to try again at some point. So At this point, at this point, it's just kind of sad. You know, like, it's, it, it's like, it's like the gold rush, but like, you're 47th in line. You know what I mean? Like. Mm -hmm. All the gold is out of the river, guys. Like, like I, you're just, you and 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 you panhandling is is harming the planet. So, yeah. I I just, I I, God, I I I I will be I will be thrilled when we are through this. Well, if don't we expect it anytime it. soon, right? If we get through it, yeah. In in perhaps the most encouraging news of the week, so. Last November, um, EA's Andrew Wilson said that NFTs were quote an important part of the future of our industry. That's a quote that he said. Sort of just like so, like again, the doomsday scenario starts swirling in my head. Like, oh, when are we going to get? You know, we're about to have fucking FIFA NFTs. Like, this is going to be the worst thing ever. And so, to and so today, uh, he said now that the during an earnings call, um, because an investor asked him about it. Uh, he said to that investor uh, that he believes collectability will continue to be an important part of our industry and the games and experiences that we offer players. Whether that's part of the NFT and the blockchain, that remains to be seen. And the way that we think about it is we want to deliver the best possible player experience we can. And so we're going to evaluate that over time. But right now, it's not something that we're that we're looking to do. So, like I said, not a not a outright uh, dismissal. Of NFTs, but the fact that a company as greedy and fucking hungry to, to make as all the money as EA, the fact that they're not diving headfirst in the pool right now, I think is an encouraging bellwether um, for at least the immediate future of NFTs. I, I think it is, but at the same time, you know, I think it's just um, EA is smart enough to know when they... You know, I think EA is smart enough to just kind of, it's like, it's like their number got called in the Royal Rumble and they're just kind of walking outside the ring, <laughs> waiting, to, waiting to, waiting to get in at the most opportune time. But that's just, you know, personal biases and, you know, a guess yeah. from me. Again, as, as we say every week, just, you know. These fucking corporate, these giant corporations, these mega corporations with money just fucking spilling out of them. They're the worst. And it's just sickening to watch them scrounge for every dollar that they can. Exactly. Who on earth would ever want to support a gigantic company like densepixels.com slash Amazon? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, look, we're railing against them, right? But I uh, look. That's why I don't. That's why I'm not like all comp all corporations should, 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 should fuck off and die. Like no, no. I use I use Amazon. You know, I just want I just want companies to pay their fair share of taxes. That's it. Um, and you know, not buy up smaller companies. Like there can be a bunch of companies. But anyway, go to dunspizzles.com slash Amazon for all of your uh, corporate shilling needs. Uh, I mean, look, the way the to... way we look at it is you're going to use them anyway, so you might as well give them less money, right? Like, like you yeah. might as well kick some of that money over here uh, to, to your boys at Dense Pixels. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Go buy yourself something really, really expensive uh, because we get a percentage of that uh, uh, of that cost. Um, 
you can uh, you can get um, you can get a little golden books, uh, little golden book Spider Man. That's the last thing we bought um, because I'm trying to I'm trying to get my son into liking Spider Man because because his mother hates spiders. So I just want him to just say Spider 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 and just <laughs> annoy the hell out of her. So go to densepixels.com slash Amazon. So we go to the post office. Uh, we'll start with Film Wanderer, who asks, on a scale of 1 to 10, how not surprised were you guys when Brock Lesnar was number 30 in the Royal Rumble and then bulldozed everybody? Um, I was watching it. Someone called it while they were watching it. The second that, uh, the second that uh, Brock Lesnar lost his match, Mm-hmm. I, said, uh, I thought, well, he's going to be in the Rumble. And then I was getting ready to type it in Discord, and somebody beat me to it. And uh, and I 100% agree with them. And uh, lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. Uh, I'm not surprised. Royal Rumble overall, uh, if if 2020 was an, was, was an A+, and 2021 was kind of like a B, this was like a C. This was a C-. minus. Yeah. It wasn't it's, that great. It's And it's frustrating because it completely – I mean, essentially invalidated the entire Rumble up to that point when, when yeah. you do that. And the most frustrating thing about it is, is you didn't have to do that to get to where you want to get to. You didn't. Like, you could have easily just inserted him into a match with Roman Reigns and had a Raw superstar win the Royal Rumble to challenge Lashley. Yeah, to challenge Bobby Lashley, yeah. I mean, it's not like he didn't have a grievance, right? Like, yeah. oh, you're in a fan of my match. Well, now I'm challenging you for your title. Right. Like that, there's the feud. You could build that all the way up to WrestleMania. He still, so he still, just, owed, he still owed a match because the match they had planned got canceled because Roman Reigns got COVID. So, like, like it's right. like, <laughs> it's really, right. it wouldn't like, have been hard at all to get there. So Right. Like, like I understand, like, COVID kind of messed everything up for day one. But like you said, it's not that difficult to get to exactly where you want to be. So it just doesn't – it just – I said in the Discord, it's as – WWE booking is as predictable as it is nonsensical. Like, it just – it doesn't <laughs> – uh, it, it nothing made sense in that rumble. It didn't tell any stories. It didn't – give you any type of like moments or matchups like the women's royal rumble was was fun but it wasn't great it was just it was just fun Mm -hmm. it was nice seeing like uh, melina and ivory and people like that back but it just yeah no very disappointed uh leonardo asks is bad bunny the best celebrity wrestler ever i think that's yeah i i I would say i don't think that's even disputable at this point yeah, it's not up for debate. Yes. Like, I'm thinking about, like, times when Snoop Dogg was in uh, WWE and, a- and the last time he was in AEW and just did the worst fucking frog splash. Now, look, I get it. He's not an athlete, right? He's built like a stick figure come to life. I get it. <laughs> don't do fucking frog splashes then, right? Like, just just don't do them. Look, I don't want to do a frog splash. Like get out of here! Like I'm, uh, and I like to think that I'm in a little bit better shape than Snoop, or I can at least take a bump better than he can. But no, nah, y'all just don't do it. Um, look at uh, look at every ce- look at all the celebrities that WWE had on uh, Raw when they had a guest every week because ratings were in the shitter, and they had to get like Jeremy Piven and Hugh Jackman and Betty White and all these like random celebrities to come in to get people to watch right like it just so no to answer your question yes bad bunny is perhaps the greatest wrestler celebrity wise uh ever he needs to be in the wwe hall of fame not donald trump what the fuck (laughs) (laughs) uh daniel asked why on earth are day one patches a thing all things aside is it a good move to let everyone know there's a day one patch before the game is released um carrie does reply to him in there but so here's kind of the timeline of video games nowadays um especially like large video games so when a game is finished so basically since games come out on discs the production process is part of that and so you'll hear like they'll say like a game's quote gone gold is the is the is the phrase that you'll hear all the time and basically what that means is uh, the game is being shipped off to production factories to to press onto a disc so that retail copies can be 
you know, sold. And usually that's about a month or so before the game actually releases. Um, the reason that games don't release complete in that state is because the internet exists now. And we have the ability to send updates. So rather than delay the production of the game, which is not easy to do, by the way, because these you know facilities that produce games, uh, it's not like that they can just get you in there whenever they want to. Like they have a production schedule that they have to respect as well. And usually have to book those that that production uh, well in advance of of getting it, um, depending on you know what different things are going on. So you have kind of a spot in line um, where these things are being produced. So like if you're if you decide like a month before the game comes out, like oh shit, like like I don't think this is going to be done in time. You can't just tell the production company is like, hey, give us another month. They're gonna be like, fuck off. We're, we'll you know it's gonna be four months before you before we can get you in there now. Um, so that so logistically, it's just not really possible to do that. Um, you have to at some point you have to the rubber has to hit the road, as it were. Um, so what you had, what you do is you once the game goes gold, you basically have your team just working on bug squashing at that point. Like you basically just have them going through the code, making sure that any bugs could be identified, and then you could push out the patch on day one. Um, it was a bigger problem around the beginning of the internet connected console generations, because not everyone had high speed internet to do. So like if you were pushing on a buggy game, uh, if you didn't have the internet, you were just going to have a buggy game. That sucks. Um, I think that that's a little bit less of a problem nowadays. Cause I don't think I know a single person whose console is not internet connected at this point. Yeah. Like internet isn't uh, where it needs to be in this country, but it, it is where it, <laughs> If you live in anywhere that is, you know, has more than a certain number of people in it, you should have a pretty decent internet connection, at least to get online and play games. Yeah. So. But, yeah. but yeah, I mean that that's that's pretty much the answer. So. Yeah, that's 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 why it's done. Um, is it frustrating? Sure, but also with the, you know, back in the day, when a game could fit on, you know, an eight meg a thirty two megabyte cartridge. Um, it was pretty easy to get the code squashed out. Um, when you're putting out games that encompass, you know, 50, 75, a hundred gigabytes of data, there's just going to be stuff in there that, 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 that's just hard to get. I, yeah. I make fun of Bethesda a lot, but I'm also very sympathetic to Bethesda because their games are so wide and so variable in scope that it would be a literal impossibility for them to release a game that didn't have a lot of bugs that even no matter how much testing they did, if they did like tens of thousands of hours of testing, there's stuff that would appear uh, that they wouldn't find just because their games are so, are so vast. And, and because there's so many variables involved that, you know, a play tester wouldn't, wouldn't catch it at all. So, yeah. Yep. So, uh, that's it for the show this week. Thank you guys for submitting your questions to the post office, which you can do at densepixels.com slash fans and join our Discord. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. Go to youtube.com slash densepixels. Subscribe there as well. Subscribe to the Dense Pixels Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash densepixels. And you can also so, uh, follow us individually. Uh, I am Dense Pixels Brad. Terrence is Apparition 410. Carrie is Suppence Carrie. You should go ahead and follow all of us, even though we don't stream as frequently as we probably should. Uh, hopefully later this year we can start to do that. And then, uh, yeah, make sure you go to densepixels.com slash premium. Sign up for premium content so that uh, when we have to hire trademark lawyers, uh, we can we can do that with uh, with very high success. Look, I'll tell you this about me: I'm a nice guy. Every everyone in the network like loves to fucking talk about how nice Brad is. He's the nicest guy. Like he like he's so mild mannered stuff like this. You put me in a situation where you give me the opportunity to be a petty asshole, I'm gonna fucking do it. Look, I got to tell you, I'm a big fan of Mad Brad. And, uh, <laughs> this isn't even Mad you know, Brad. Like, I'm not upset. Right, I'm like, fucking, right. Like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just feeling like, I'm like, oh, like, 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 I'm like, I'm like Denzel at the end of Train Day. Like, you motherfucker. <laughs> like, I'm just like, I'm just like sitting there, just like fucking like steaming, like, like, just like building this up about it right now. So, <laughs> don't fucking yeah, play. Yeah. Don't fucking yeah. play. This side of Brad doesn't come out often, uh, and when it does, uh, you know, it, it, it it's. As, uh, as the great Rupert Thorne always says, the brighter the picture, the darker the negative. <laughs>
think one did there. Thanks for listening and watching. We'll see you all the next time. See ya. You're watching the Dense Pixels YouTube channel? Click the subscribe button while you're here and make sure you check out our weekly podcast where we discuss the latest gaming news and our impressions on what games we've been playing.